Hey everyone, I'm Mike Shaw, and I'm here with my friends at B&H to help you learn about focusing at night, choosing a tripod, choosing a lens, planning your shot, and finally, learning how to slay that high ISO dragon once and for all. Let's get started. My first tip is how to get a good focus at night. Now, the challenge with focusing at night is the autofocus feature of your camera just doesn't work very well. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to learn how to focus directly on a bright star or a planet using the live view on your LCD display. So first, place your camera into manual focus mode. Next, enable the live view and find a bright star, planet, or even a distant light that you can see on the LCD screen. You're gonna to want to enlarge the object using the magnification feature on your screen. And you might also consider using a loop like this one right here from Hoodman that you place directly on the screen. The loop magnifies the screen and allows you to see the star better for focusing. Now, you can manually adjust the focus ring on your lens to get a good focus directly on that object. When the object is in focus, it's as small as it can possibly be. Now, if you're absolutely just starting out, there is a plan B. In this case, all you need to do is during the day before you go out at night is to first place your camera into autofocus mode. Next, use your camera's autofocus ability to focus on a distant object like a building or a mountain or even the high clouds. Finally, just switch your camera to manual focus and you are good to go. You might also put a little piece of tape holding your focus ring in place, just in case you accidentally bump it at night. And that's how you get a good focus at night. With a little bit of practice and perseverance, you'll be focusing like a pro in no time and your images will show the difference. Tip number two involves choosing the right tripod, the foundation of a successful night photography session. Now the first feature I look for in a good tripod for night photography are large diameter legs legs that have a diameter of about an inch. The next thing is the maximum height. I like to go with the tallest tripod I can that gives me the maximum flexibility. The third thing are the number of segments that the legs collapse into. I like to keep mine as small as possible, typically three or four. And the other aspect concerns air travel. Can I fit the tripod into my carry-on bag or do I have to check it with my checked luggage? Another question is, does the tripod have a center column? I typically stay away from center columns for night photography because they introduce a little bit more vibration and shake. Also, does the tripod have a bubble level built into the base? This is extremely helpful for doing panoramas and using star trackers. Which leads to another consideration is can you independently rotate the base once it's set up? Another feature that's very helpful for star tracker astrophotography. My final consideration is how you adjust the length of the legs. Do you have a twist release or do you have a lever release like this? I generally prefer the twist release. It's easier for me to use in the cold when I'm wearing, wearing gloves, but either case will work just fine. And I'd also recommend staying away from smaller, lighter tripods, like travel tripods, because they just don't have the stability needed for the long exposures required in night photography. And that's just it. So now you know how to choose a tripod for night photography. Tip number three is all about lens choice. What lens should you use? Let me explain. The first question I get on every workshop, what lens should I bring? My answer, all of them. Here's why. So let's start with an all sky circular fisheye. This is a great choice for the Milky Way and Aurora displays. It's also the best choice to capture huge fireballs during meteor showers, although the smaller meteors are likely to slip through. Wide angle lenses are next in the 14 to 24 millimeter focal length range. These lenses are the workhorse of night photography and rightly so. They capture huge areas of the sky with minimal distortion. They're also available as prime lenses with very large maximum aperture or minimum f-stop, like uh, f1.4 or f1.8. These fast prime wide angle lenses are ideal for everything in night photography. Next up are what I call mid-range telephoto lenses, those in the 24 to 70 millimeter range. These are my lenses of choice when I want to capture constellations, detailed close-ups of the Milky Way, single meteors, and close-ups of the Aurora. These are also great choices for panoramas. Now, once we start to use lenses longer than around 70 millimeters, we'll want to use a star tracker. But with that in mind, let's go through a few examples of what you can capture with these higher focal length lenses. So first, you're gonna to wanna to reach for lenses in the 70 to 200 millimeter focal length range for shots of the Rho Ophiuchus molecular cloud, the Andromeda galaxy, many hydrogen alpha nebulae, and tons of other deep sky gems. And once you reach the 200 to 500 millimeter focal length range, you're really able to explore deep space, galaxies, smaller nebulae, and galaxy clusters. So rest assured, no matter what lenses you have, there's always something you can capture in the night sky. 
Tip number four is all about designing your shot before you even leave your home so you know exactly what to expect and when to be at the right place at the right time to get your shot right the first time. Now I use four main tools to plan and refine my shots. First, I'll use a planisphere like this one or the program Stellarium to outline the basic concept of my shot. Next, I'll use the Planet Pro app for precision image design. And finally, when I'm in the field, I really like photo pills for ironing out the bugs in my shot. So let's begin with the planisphere. Planispheres tell you everything that's visible in the night sky on a given night and at a specific time and where to find them. It also allows you to find all the possible date and time combinations when the object of your choice is exactly where you want it to be. So if you haven't yet learned how to use a planisphere, I highly recommend it. And I've provided a do-it-yourself planisphere with the top 50 deep sky objects to photograph in my brand new book that I describe at the end of these tips. Now Planet Pro turns your smartphone into a virtual camera. The virtual viewfinder of Planet allows you to design your image exactly how you want it to be, right down to the lens focal length, the tripod position, the camera direction, the date, and the time to press the shutter. And finally, Photopills has a powerful augmented viewfinder for all kinds of visualizations once you're in the field to refine your shot. So taken together, all of these tools really help you break through the barrier of the most difficult thing when you're starting out in night photography, and that's understanding the night sky. And tip number five, how to slay the high ISO dragon. Let's dive in. So the ISO makes up one of the three corners of the exposure triangle, the other two being the aperture, the f-stop, and the shutter speed. Now when you're shooting in a city environment, you're likely going to be using an ISO in the 400 to 1600 range. When you get a little bit further away from the city center, then you can be using ISOs in the 1600 to 3200 range. But when you get into a dark sky site with no snow and a moonless night, what I would recommend is, yes, get ready for it, to use ISOs of 6400 and even 12,800. Your camera will do just fine. I can't tell you the number of times on a workshop I finally convinced someone to shoot the Milky Way with an ISO of 12,800 and the reaction is always the same. Holy smokes! And a little bit more colorful than that. So go ahead and give it a try. Take your camera up to 12,800 ISO and see what you can discover the next time you're out in a dark sky location. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the gear I talked about today, consider visiting BNH Photo. And if you'd like to learn about my field workshops, my presentations, or classes, you can visit my website, mikeshawphotography.com. And also consider purchasing a copy of my brand new book, The Beginner's Guide to Astrophotography, also available through my website and my publisher, Rocky Nook. Best of luck for clear, dark skies.